Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the new features in After Effects CS6. Now this is going to be how to take regular 2D text and turn it into sweet 3D text. So, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is go up to Composition, then New Composition, and I'm just going to create a new document, 1920 by 1080. So once we have this new document, the first thing that we're going to do is get some text out onto our stage. So I'm just going to grab my text tool and I'm going to be using Arial Black with a white um, color and I'm just going to take and type out the letters 3D. Okay, so now I can take and scale this down a little bit so that we have some room to animate this. So the first step in actually creating our text um, extrusion from just a plain text layer is to take and make this text 3D. So I'm just going to turn on the 3D checkbox right here. Now if you don't see it, you might need to toggle switches and modes in order to actually see this box. So when you check this box, you're going to see some new options come about up there. So you can see as I turn that on, we're getting more options. So most likely, yours will look like this. It will be under Classic so it'll say classic 3D up in the corner. Now if we take and open up our text layer here to see our options, you can see we have text, transform, and material options. So these aren't the options that we're looking for in order to take and make this into a 3D object. We're looking for some extrusion and geometry settings. So in order to get these we need to change this to that ray traced option. So I'm going to go under renderer, click on classic 3D, and select ray traced 3D. So if I click OK, you can see that now we have this geometry options right here underneath our text file. Now this is going to be the bulk of the effect. So what I can take and do um, is you would think because this is in 3D that I could take and come up to my camera tool, just this um, unified camera tool, and be able to rotate this around, but After Effects won't let me. Now the reason for this is because we need a separate camera. So I'm going to come up to Layer, New, and go to Camera. I'm just going to leave this at the default setting, so a 55 millimeter, and click OK. So now if we take, we can take and pan around our text um, and see it in space. But you can see that there's no extrusion on that yet because we haven't added it in. So what we can do to add this extrusion is to take and go to Geometry Options. And we're going to scroll down a little bit. And you can see this extrusion depth right here. This is going to be the heart of our um, actual extrusion. So I'm just going to take and start cranking that up. Now we can take our camera and we can start to see that we have a little bit of depth to our text. Now it's hard to see our text and read it because there's really no lighting source which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but you can see that we're starting to get the depth that we want. Now I found for um, this effect that somewhere around 175 seems to be thick enough. Um, so just play around with it depending on your project and get it to the depth that you want. But now you can see that we have a pretty good depth to our text right there. So. The next thing that we need to do is actually add in a lighting source. Now I'm just going to go up and transform my text so that we can start to get um, a little bit of an angle on it so that we can apply our lighting source more um, intelligently. So I'm going to take and go to transform. You still have all of your transform options and you can see if I adjust Y rotation that's going to rotate our text kind of in the way that we want. Um, right now the orientation point um, Basically the pivot point for this text is down in the bottom right corner, or bottom left corner. So I'm going to grab my pan behind tool, and I'm just going to take and put that to somewhere around the center of my text, basically where these anchor points um, are lining up. Now you can get that really precise, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to eyeball it. So once you have that done, um, I can take now and change my Y rotation. You can see that it rotates pretty closely around the center. Okay, so what we can do is probably set up just a little bit of an animation here. So I'm just going to take an under Y rotation at the very beginning of my timeline, make a keyframe, come out. This is at five seconds right here, so this is about two and a half. We have about one, so somewhere around 30 seconds to one uh, second will be the length of our animation. So then I can take and put a one right here. You can see there's two numbers. We have 0x plus 0, 0.0 degrees. Now the one on the right is basically denoting um, how many degrees you're rotating. Now the one on the left is saying how many rotations do you want it to do. So if we want it to rotate 100 or 360 degrees or one full rotation, we just put in a one right there instead of cycling up this other number. So you can see that now it rotates fully around. Okay, so we still have a little bit of a problem. Um, we can't really see our text. That 
pre looks pretty bad. Um, we can't really read the text because we don't have a lighting source. So inside of our text, there should be shadows and things cast um, in more of a realistic situation, um, which we're not getting right now. So we're going to go up to Layer, New, and we're going to add in a lighting source. So I'm just going to go to Light. Now the lighting that I'm using is a spotlight. You can play around with the other types of lights, but we're going with spotlight. I'm just going to go with something like a little bit more of a yellow hue. Um, I guess more of a tungsten kind of hotter feeling light. We'll go with an intensity of about 75. The cone angle basically um, helps you determine um, how wide you want the light to spread. So a lower cone angle is going to be a smaller angle, so a more direct light. So I'm just going to leave it a little bit higher. We'll just leave the cone feather at 50, and you want to make sure that you have cast shadows set to on so that we'll get shadows um, generated by this light source. So we'll have that set on, and then I just left the default options. So then I can click OK. Now you can see that this instantly changes the feel of our scene. Um, you can start to see our text is really um, actually looks 3D and we're starting to get some shadows on the inside pieces. So what I'm going to do is basically just take and drag my light source over to the right side. Um, again, make sure that you're on the right tool. I'm on the pan behind tool right now, so I can't really move the light source. You want to be on just your general selection tool. So now I can take and move this over here. We'll take and probably move this up. And basically I'm just moving the light source itself um, right now by using these arrow keys. And what I need to be moving um, after I get that in the position that I want it. So I'm getting it kind of to the height that I want. And then I can take this center point right here, which is basically where you're aiming the light, and I can put that right on our text. So you can see now we have some pretty cool text being generated. Now, as I scrub through this, it's going to be pretty crappy quality, uh, mainly because um, I'm at a quarter resolution right here. You want to leave this on auto or a quarter or something lower, depending on how much processing power you have in your computer, just so that you can scrub through things um, without having to wait for it to render um, quickly. Now, you will see um, later on, we're going to start tweaking some things that will take longer to render. Um, one tip I wanted to give you guys is if you hit the caps lock key, you can basically turn off um, rendering temporarily. So if you turn on the caps lock, um, then you can adjust a bunch of things, then you can turn back off the caps lock, and then all of your changes will be applied at once so you don't have to wait for it to render every time you adjust one single number. Um, so that's just a little tip that I wanted to throw out there. So um, what we want to do next, um, we can actually start tweaking our text now. We have the basic effect done. Um, so let's try and get our text somewhere that looks pretty good so we can see a good deal of it so that we can um, start adjusting the materials and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to our geometry options. Now you also have bevel options within here so I'm just going to under where it says bevel style it's currently set to none. I'm going to select angular um, which is basically kind of more of a cut kind of look and then I can take and turn the bevel depth um, all the way up and you can start to see that we have a nice bevel now around the inside of our text. You can also adjust the whole bevel depth. Um, if I were to turn that down, you'd see less of a bevel around the um, D here because this is an actual hole in the text. So um, that's kind of a nice feature. Um, if you want more bevel, uh, I'm sure there's ways to actually bump that up a little bit more. So one of the other things that you can adjust, um, this kind of looks a little bit flat. Now you can turn up the intensity of your light to see if you can get it a little brighter, but you have a number of material options within your 3D objects. So what I can do is open up this material options here. Now you want to turn on cast shadows. So basically that means that this 3D text will be able to cast shadows if you had another 3D object like a floor or something in here. This would actually be casting a shadow onto that object. So you might not want it on but in most cases you probably will so that this looks like it's actually existing in that space. You also want to have on accept shadows. So basically um, if there was something in front of it and it was there was a light shown on it, then it would be casting a shadow onto this 3D text. Um, so basically some of these are self-explanatory. The other ones um, you just want to play around with and see what it actually does to your text. A couple of the ones that we're actually going to adjust are this specular intensity. Um, we can take and turn that up and you can start to see that it makes our text a lot brighter. So it looks like it's being hit with a little bit hotter of a light. It makes it look a little bit um, shinier. Now you also have specular shininess, which you would think if you turn up would actually make it shinier, um, but it actually doesn't. So I'm just going to keep it around maybe three or four, something lower. 
than metal. Um, if you take this away, it starts to look less like metal, and I guess more like gold. In this case, it starts to uh, take more of the color from your light. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at 100 so we kind of get a more metal look. You can turn up the reflection intensity. Um, the higher it is, the less kind of shiny it gets. So I'm just going to leave this maybe around 10 or so. You can um, adjust reflection sharpness and transparency and all kinds of other good stuff. But for now, um, I think this gives us a pretty good look. So now you can see. Um, let's actually take and bump this up to full resolution. So you can see that it starts to render out this thing. Now I can't even scroll right now. If I tried to scroll so that I could adjust some other things, it wouldn't work. So this is where that little tip that I was telling you about uh, before comes in. If I hit the caps lock, well, it actually finished rendering right when I hit the caps lock. Um, if I hit the caps lock, you'll see that it brings up this refresh disabled. So now I can take, scroll around, set a whole bunch of things, and have it at full resolution, and it's not going to be changing and having to re-render this every time I adjust one of these numbers. So that um, can be very annoying, so that little caps lock trick definitely helps. So I'm going to pop this back to auto, which will grab quarter resolution, um, which actually looks pretty good. So you'll see our lighting at times is a little harsh um, for our object, so you'll probably want more than one light, possibly on your text, in order to get the effect that you're looking for. Um, but I think for the amount of time that we've spent on this, um, we've been able to use the new extrusion in After Effects pretty well. So I'm just going to render this little animation out. Um, I will be having another tutorial, hopefully pretty soon, on using this same technique except pulling in Illustrator files um, because you can do more than just text with this new extrusion technique. You can actually pull in custom Illustrator files and custom um, shapes that you actually take in creating an Illustrator and turn those into 3D objects and animate those as well. So we'll be taking a look at that sometime in the future. So um, our animation is pretty much done here. You can see we have our nice spin with our lighting, our 3D object. This would look pretty cool if you scaled it down and put it in the corner or something. I know I've seen that before. Or if you have a logo or an emblem, you can take and spin it in the corner for your YouTube videos or whatnot. So that's about it for this tutorial. Hope you guys learned something about the new extrusion feature in After Effects CX CS6. Um, thanks for watching. I will have a new video coming out every week, so make sure and subscribe. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.